Hello everyone, Satorn here giving you another quick tutorial on Vicky3 regarding interest groups. This is a large topic, so we're going to have to split it into two videos. The first one's going to be about growing interest groups, what they are, how you can control them, and the power of their traits. The second video will be more about clout, political power, and how you can pass those laws. So keep an eye out for that. So let's get into it. In Vicky3, there's nine interest groups. The names might be different depending on the country that you're playing, but their views will be the same. So there's always some landowner group as well as armed forces, which is the military. There's some religious group as well as an intelligentsia or the better educated within your country, rural folk, petite bourgeois, industrialists, trade unions, and one that's not listed here, the politically inactive. Every single person in your country is part of an interest group. For example, let's click on the Catholic Church and then go to population. We can see here... There's 4.5 thousand clergymen that support the Catholic Church. There's almost 600 aristocrats and almost a thousand peasants that support the Catholic Church. Now let's click on the intelligentsia. What's interesting, you'll see the aristocrats again, and you'll see 554 here support the intelligentsia. Looking closer, they say their political interests are represented as the landowners. So right now we looked at the Catholic Church and the intelligentsia, and we saw some aristocrats in there, about 500 each. If we click on the landowners, we now see the aristocrats. We see over 2,000. So it is true that their interests are represented as landowners, so mostly into that one interest group. However, it's not guaranteed. So if we want to grow a specific interest group, for example, the petite bourgeoisie, we should hover over and we can see how it's made up. So right now, 44% of it is shopkeepers, 25% clerks, 21% bureaucrats and 5% clergymen. And if we hover over these, we can also see, for example, the shopkeepers usually fall within the petite bourgeoisie and the clerks here, they have the petite bourgeoisie or potentially the trade unions. So now that you got this information, what you need to try to do is support your economy that will create professions that have a higher chance of joining the interest groups that you want to grow. So for example, the petite bourgeoisie, we'd want to build these buildings if it made sense for our economy. We can build textile mills because it creates shopkeeper jobs, which are likely to go to the petite bourgeoisie. We could also make furniture manufacturers. If we don't want to go that direction, we need bureaucracy. We could go for government administration jobs, which creates bureaucrats that also will go to the petite bourgeoisie or a large amount of clerks, which could go there as well. More difficult approach would be to try to increase your trade centers. The only way you could do this is by creating more trade routes, and this is done automatically. So this would be a little bit difficult to pull off. However, it does create a thousand shopkeepers per level. So now that you got more buildings creating professions that are likely to join the petite bourgeoisie, you wanna also make this interest group even more attractive. To do this, we could click on the interest group button and there's gonna be a suppress and bolster option. It's gonna cost 200 authority a week, but we want to bolster the effects of this is impacted by your laws so if we go back here and check out our laws and under free speech depending on what we have here you can see there's a 50 percent bonus a 40 percent bonus a 30 percent and a protected speech you cannot do this at all every leader is also part of an interest group so if we click on our general slash ruler we can see he's a part of the armed forces which is a shame it would be nice if he was part of the petite bourgeoisie However, his popularity is also neutral, which means there's really no effect here. Uh, if you're liked or you're disliked, there should be a negative or positive to the attractiveness of your interest group. I don't have the exact numbers. If any of you can find that, please put it down in the comments below. In addition, if you're lucky, your leader of your interest group may also be popular, but in our case, he's not. No matter how attractive you make your interest group, there's just some professions that won't join different interest groups. For example, academics will never join the armed forces or clergymen will never join the industrialists, which kind of makes sense. Other aspects that's important of interest groups is clout, which is your political power or support to be able to pass laws that you care about. I'll have that in another video. Approval, which is extremely important for your interest group. If you have them unhappy, you'll get a negative trait. In this case, xenophobia of a minus 10% influence plus 100% radicals to discrimination. If we could get their happiness up to plus five, we'll get a plus 10% bureaucracy bonus. If we could get it up to loyal plus 10, we'll have a minus 10% loan interest. And if they're in government and we can get their cloud up to 20%, all these bonuses can double. Approval ratings can also be impacted by events that you can't control. So when those do come up, take a look and see and how it'll impact potentially your interest group or others. A quick way to increase your approval rating is by looking at the laws that the interest group endorses and you can try to pass this. Even if it doesn't happen, the whole time that you're trying to pass it, they're going to love you. 
So you can see this under the green, the one, the groups who endorse it and who are going to get this bonus. But you can also see the ones that are in the opposition that are going to get a negative. So you need to be careful here. You can see the intelligentsia are going to oppose. Again, not that big of a threat. They're only 11%. And the trade union is even less. They're 1%. They're marginalized. Also, what the marginalized means is that if they are super unhappy, even those negative traits that they do try to enact will not happen because they're too small. So let's try enacting the monarchy. If we click it here and then we look actually underneath the overview before we even unpause, the loyalty is already up to plus 20. We could go back here and also it's a nice way to see it over the overview. You can see everything that's active. So we're going to unpause real quick. And all of a sudden we can see a lot of people are happy. Maybe uh, intelligentsia is a little unhappy. So minus 10% prestige. But you can see all the bonuses that we're getting now and how much happier people are. The law is not in yet. It's just ticking away. We're just trying to pass it and is making everyone happy and we're getting all the bonuses. When this gets canceled or doesn't, then the bonuses are going to drop and the approval ratings will as well. If the monarchy law does pass and the petite bourgeoisie does endorse it, you can see here they'd get a plus one approval rating. If they strongly endorse it, they get a plus two. So laws are really one of the best ways to make an interest group's approval rating stable. I know this video had a lot of information in a short amount of time. I hope this gives you the foundation regarding interest groups. The next video will be going into even more detail about interest groups, political power, clout, and how you can pass laws. If you have any questions, I know I didn't capture everything. Put it down in the comments below. Feel free to hit that notification, subscribe, and like button. They're free. And as always, for the swarm.